but a lot of information on the TNA brand revival in that rant. And we're going to keep on rolling on the impact train with a separate rant here. Taking a look at the taking from Sunday night in Cicero Stadium, the Bomb for Glory fallout. Also, it was uh, being advertised locally as a Lucha Libre celebration as well. We'll get into in a moment about what that was all about. But uh, first and foremost, let's talk about the numbers from the Bound for Glory fallout on Sunday night. I talked about this in the other ramp, but it was around, I would say, somewhere around probably 2,300 people there, maybe 2,200. Still a good turnout for the second night of action of Impact coming off of Bound for Glory. I would say Bound for Glory was absolutely sold on, no question. I would say this was probably around 85% filled to capacity. Uh, I got a ticket in the bleachers literally, I think it was the day before or something like that, and there was just limited bleacher seats left. So that should tell you uh, how the turnout was for the show. So, now as I said, there was a um, Lucha Libre celebration that was scheduled for approximately an hour before gates opened for this taping on Sunday night from Cicero Stadium. I did not attend that. The, the uh, price point was just a little bit too high for my, my liking at the moment. It was $100. But you get in to the event and you get autographs from the Lucha Stars. Um, what they were primarily promoting was Return Conan. Uh, also, Who and Who Guerrera, Black Taurus, the Real Kid, and a Samurai Del Sol, who's from Chicago, the former Kalisto. He's uh, been doing more and more stuff in Impact, so I'm not sure if he's actually signed a contract or if he's just doing maybe show by show kind of thing but whatever the case um this happened an hour before the show like i said i was talking to a few people at the show that i figured maybe attended because uh this was in an area in chicago that's a very heavy latino population and as such there was a lot of latino fans at this show so um, did ask around some people did attend they said basically what happened was uh, they did autograph sessions with all these guys and you wouldn't have to pay extra for that. You got uh, photo ops with them. They gave away some stuff, uh, like they gave away, I think, a free Laredo Kid mask. I'd seen a lot of people with them. And just some other like photos, things like that that they provided. Also, they provided a meal of some sort that I don't know the logistics of that. I couldn't get I could a straight answer from people on that, but they advertised it as an authentic Mexican meal, tacos, beans, and rice, etc. So that was the gist of it. There also was apparently a Q&A with the Lucha talent as well. I don't know if that was in the ring or where exactly that was, but that was kind of the gist of the Lucha Libre celebration that they did before the show. Good idea. I mean... They probably got a pretty good turnout for that one. Like I said, the price point of $100 is just a little bit, a little bit much. If they had done like $50, I would have been there in a flash. No question about it. All right, so from that point on, things kicked off on the taping with one match. Uh, I think this was the only match that they aired for Before the Impact. It may not air even on Before the Impact. It may possibly be a match that they taped for their YouTube. We'll see where they go with it, but Samurai Del Sol opened up the show, defeating Alan Angels in a, a really solid, I, in fact, I think I like this match better than, for instance, opening on the pay-per-view, Chris Saban and Kenta. 
I think I like this match better. If it if it ends up not airing on the regular Impact show, it's a damn shame. This was damn good. This was a solid, solid open. Then we get another match that they're taping uh, way ahead of time. I talked about it a little bit in the previous rant, where they brought back the turkey suit. So this was the first example of the TNA brand kind of being revisited a little bit with the turkey suit returning for a Thanksgiving, I guess a match that is going to air on Thanksgiving night. That is a Thursday, of course, and that's when Impact usually airs. We're going to get an eight-man tag turkey suit match where the loser of this match has to wear the turkey suit. So um, let me tell you about the competitors. You may have seen the video where I showed uh, all the entrances here. Was, this is a weird mix of guys to have just thrown in here. And it was really a shame. A couple of these talents I thought should have and could have had better spots on this taping. Absolutely. But instead we got uh, PCO Jake something. It's a, it's a real shame that he wasn't on a different spot in this one. Johnny Swinger, and to round this all off, the guy who had the best match in perhaps multiple years in Impact, Steve Mike Bailey, in this shit show of a turkey suit match. Oh man, I just, I was so disappointed when I saw Mike Bailey coming off to this. I just thought, that means that he's not going to be anywhere else on this card, and that's the thing. And anyway, those baby faces took on the team of the Good Hands, Champagne Singh, and Jay Vidal. Um, uh, the match was okay. You'll see it on Thanksgiving. It was all right. There was some good high spots here and there, but nothing uh, out of the ordinary. Finish came when PCO got the PCO assault on Jay Vidal. And afterwards, Vidal did not want to wear the suit. And uh, uh, his entourage was out there trying to get him to, to get in the suit. Giselle Shaw and Savannah Evans, he was trying to run away. They weren't having any of it. Finally gets the suit on, kind of throws a little temper tantrum in the middle of the ring, and that's it for that. But airing this match in about five weeks from now on Thanksgiving night on the Thanksgiving episode of Impact Wrestling. And by the way, um, no real indication about how long uh, this taping covers as far as shows, but I'm thinking at least two weeks, maybe three weeks. There's a possibility some of these matches may be moving way out because we have tapings coming up in the UK as well. But then we are, we're kind of going dark with Impact for quite a while. I think they're doing one show in November and December from Santino Morella's Battle Arts Academy in Canada, and that's it. So some of these matches could air down the road, or very well as possible. They just, the next few weeks, they air a lot of this stuff. I don't know, we'll see. But I do know for a fact that this coming week, this coming Thursday on Impact Wrestling, there is going to be significant coverage from Bound for Glory, which is going to include Steve Mike Bailey and, and the Osprey match, and the Josh Alexander and Alex Shelley match, apparently both in their entirety. So that may cut, up, cut some of this stuff um, this coming Thursday. We'll see. Time will tell. Moving into the actual impact on access tapings, we had Tasha Steeles defeating Diana Frazzo. Check out the finish right here on Wrestling Raps. There is a video of it if you are interested. One thing about from this match, there was a twerking battle. Yes, you heard me right. Both of these girls were twerking their proverbial asses off back and forth in a twerking battle in this match something to be looking forward to for sure digital media championship was next uh and i have seen some results online about this match that claimed that tommy dreamer actually defeated crazy steve to retain his title that is not true what happened was crazy steve defeated tommy dreamer by disqualification when tommy dreamer stole crazy steve's fork and then effectively forked Crazy Steve, he got blood. It was what it was, but that was a disqualification finish, which 
my impression is they'll probably have this match again at Hard to Kill in the rematch for the Digital Media Championship. Brian Myers was up next against Joe Henry. Decent match. Um, Myers won. Uh, I don't really know what else to say about it other than it was just kind of there. I think Alicia, or I can't remember who exactly distracted Henry in this match. It may have been Moose. Uh, don't quote me on that, but somebody got involved in this match and I just cannot remember for the life of me. Um, I don't think it was not Matt Cardona, he was not on the show, but Myers did defeat Henry in this one. Then we got to Eric Young in there against Eddie Edwards. Eric Young did defeat Edwards in one, uh, another match here where you can see the finish on Wrestling Rants in a video here. Uh, basically, Alicia Edwards tried to distract Eric Young and it didn't really work. Eddie Edwards got distracted instead, and Eric Young won. I think he may have a low blow at Edwards or hit him with a cane or something along those lines here in this match. Then we get to Dirty Daniel and Oleg Prudius, the former Vladimir Kozlov, a team I am not a fan of at all. Uh, against two jobbers. One guy I could not get the name of. The other guy was local talent Storm Grayson. Now, I think the other talent was a local talent from Chicago as well, so just be on the look for that down the road. They got completely squashed in this match, mostly by Kudius. Um, Dirty Dangle basically did like commentary during the match, so it was more or less a handicap match. Then we get the World Championship match, kind of in the middle of the show, Impact World Champion Alex Shelley against the recently and turning more and more as time goes on, heel Jonathan Gresham, who did a lot of heel tactics in this match, choking out Alex Shelley with his wrist tape. Uh, there was a lot of eye pokes and shit like that, so Gresham is full on healing at this point. Really good match though, this was the first really standout match of this show, I would give it a solid three and a half stars, no question. Uh, this was real good. You, you really got to check out this match, no doubt. Shelly over Gresham to retain his championship. Um, up next was Moose in there against Heath Slater. Not a good match at all. Um, Brian Myers did cost Heath the match. He did interfere and Moose won. Then Moose and Myers attack Heath after the match. Rhino comes out, spears Myers, or gores Myers. Obviously, uh, we're seeing a tag match here with Heath and Rhino against Moose and Brian Myers coming up probably at the heart show as well. Tag championships are on the line next as Ace Austin, Chris Bay, Team ABC, defeated Kenny King and Shelton Jean to retain the championships in a very just kind of their match. Um, I think at this point in the show, after the Moose and Heath match, I was looking for something a little more bombastic, and this match was not that. However, the next match certainly delivered and may have been possibly the probably the third best match of the weekend in Chicago here. This was a Lucha Libre rule, rule six-man tag match. Conan first came out and did commentary for this match. We saw Black Taurus, Laredo Kid, and Ruben Two Guerrero in there against the New Trios team of the Rascals as Myron Reed is now in Impact as part of the Rascals crew. He's been doing uh, matches with the Rascals as part of the Rascals on the independent scene, but he's now a part of the Rascals team here in Impact as well. And this match was fucking awesome. The crowd was so into this. Remember, heavy Latino crowd for Chicago, and they were so into this match. This may have had, had more heat for this match than even the Speedball Mike Bailey Will Osprey match from Bound for Glory, no doubt. Um, you'll see for yourself when they air this match. This was phenomenal. Everybody had their working shoes on here. Real fast pace. Lucha Libre rules meeting. No tags necessary. In and out. One guy goes out. Another guy comes in. Boom, boom, boom. High spot, high spot. Um, there was one spot where Myron Reed basically did a flying cutter over the top ropes to the floor. That was absolutely awesome. Well, we're checking out this match when it airs on TV. No doubt. 
the Luchadors did win this match. I believe the finish was uh, Black Toros pinning Myron Reed, if I recall, to miss it. Then we got a mixed tag of Bully Ray and Jordan Grace, so you know the story with them from Mount for Glory. They were in a match against Kylie King and Steve Macklin. So this plays into Bully Ray's uh, storyline stuff with Macklin coming up, they're feuding. Jordan Grace got into a little with Kylan King, I think, in the past as well. And also, Bully Ray got into it in the Call Your Shot gauntlet match a lot with Kylan King. A uh, little trivia for you, I think Bully Ray actually helped train Kylan King, so there you go. The match was okay. Um, Jordan Grace defeated King. And then after the match, it looked like Bully Ray, who was kind of during the match being kind of uncooperative, kind of being a little, kind of a little tick baby uh, that he lost Jordan Grace at Bound for Glory. So he was kind of not really thrilled to be in this match. He gave the impression. After the match, Bully Ray kind of gets in the face of Jordan Grace, has the Call Your Shot trophy, hands it to her, shows her respect. I believe they shake hands, he walks off. So once again, putting over Jordan Grace two nights in a row effectively. I like it. I like it a lot. Next up was another, I guess you'd call intergender match of sorts. This one was Trinity Fatu against Sunny Kiss. There uh, was some definite interest from people, uh, YouTube comments, wanting to know about this match. And I thought the match was okay. There was some clunky spots, but generally, these two worked very well together. Trinity did go over Sunny Kiss in this one. Mutual respect once again after the match. So we'll see where they go with Sunny Kiss from here. But uh, this was a kind of a surprise. I didn't expect Sunny Kiss to be working against Trinity right off the bat here. Uh, basically the first taking after the Elf and Glory, but there you go. And then to conclude the evening, main event, Will Ospreay defeated Josh Alexander. Uh, roughly a 15 and 20 minute match, and I said it in the ramp previously, but just a ditch below the quality of Mike Bailey and, and uh, Will Osprey, which I said was a solid, solid five star match. I think this one you'd have to go well above four stars, probably four and a quarter, four and a half stars for this match. It will air on TV. Just the question is when exactly that will be. Is anybody's guess, but. Boy, these two work so well together. This this was just a fantastic match that the crowd was big time into. And also after the match, um, lots of good post-match stuff afterwards. After the, after the match ended, Osprey cut a film on YouTube. You will see some of it that I posted uh, on a YouTube clip here right on the channel. And Osprey uh, said for one, one thing that Josh Alexander would be a fantastic competitor in New Japan, and particularly in the G1. Osprey admitted he had not seen really any big match from Josh Alexander before, so he put it over strong, though. He said, uh, this guy's got talent, this guy's got a future, this guy is the heart and soul of Impact slash TNA. But Osprey also talked about his, his history, um, the fact that he actually was watching a TNA show where he first got the passion within him to become a pro wrestler. So there you go. And Osprey also said that he actually wants to wrestle for TNA before his new Japan contract expires in February. So that begs the question. Are we going to see Will Osprey at Hard to Kill in Las Vegas? Hopefully. It's possible. It's a week after Wrestle Kingdom in, uh, in Tokyo. So it's very possible he could be a part of Heart and Kill in Las Vegas. And if he does, I, I would love to see a rematch with Mike Bailey. I think that would be my first choice. But you could just as well do another match with Josh Alexander. You could get him in the hunt in the world title match. There's a lot of possibilities there. Um, also, Josh Alexander said, said some stuff about Osprey as well. They're basically teasing another match, saying, let's do it again. Had a great time. Put over Osprey as one of the best wrestlers in the world. Uh, mutual respect. Great way to end this show. What? 
this was one of the better impact TV tapings I've been to. Um, there was a few lows in the taping, but the, the Osprey Josh Allen Sander match, the Alex Shelley Jonathan Gresham match, that Lucha six man tag match, oh, great, great stuff. Really looking forward to checking out these shows when they're on TV coming up, no doubt about it. All right, everybody, that cover is bomb for Glory's Fallout. Who knows when this stuff will all air? I think some of it will start this Thursday on Impact, continue on at least probably next week as well. I do know that I think it's like perhaps like uh, November 9th, I think is officially when the um, UK taping stuff it starts airing so I'm thinking a majority of this stuff will air in the next three weeks of Impact Wrestling on Access but maybe not all of it. Time will tell. Alright everybody we are rolling Wrestling Rants is back. I am ready willing and able to get rants in on a daily basis and the first iteration of that is coming up with midweek must-see matches we are here midweek on a wednesday come back later tonight as we talk about all of the best matches of this past week in the world of wrestling as part of midweek must-see matches then tomorrow we got Rance Respective. That is a throwback Thursday looking back at this day in pro wrestling. Moving forward on Tuesday, we got versus Impact versus Ray Honor. It's coming back on the weekend. We got Laying the Rant down. Maybe a double shot of that for y'all. And then next week we'll be rolling with Daily Rants every single day as well. So stay tuned. Check in, like, subscribe, tell your friends, Wrestling Rants is back! Bye-bye! See ya for midweek! Must see matches coming up next!